Hey, you tubular people. I am sorry that we were a little tardy. Clyde was busy getting gay in San Diego, and I was busy remembering that I am a grad student, which means that I have to write papers and do work. So for part one of this segment, we are taking out the trusty list-making materials, so get excited. So one of the questions that I keep getting from people is, what do you think about long-distance relationships? And let me tell you what I think. Fun fact, lucky for you, I'm in my first long-distance relationship right now. My girlfriend lives 2,200 miles away from me. It's not always awesome, don't get me wrong, but I came up with a list of, you know, things you should consider in a long-distance relationship if you're thinking of having one, and tips and tricks, I guess, to making it work. I think number one that I picked is the most important. LDRs are not for babies with a Z or an S or any other spelling of babies. I don't think that I could do what I'm doing right now, even a couple years ago. You need to be financially secure enough to make those trips to see the other person and be able to take the time. Time and money. It's a bitch, but they're important. Numero dos, LDRs are no joke on your wallet, and I know that kind of ties in. Let's just... That's all I have. I have coins. Coins. And what I'm really trying to say here is I've had to cut costs to make things work, to be able to travel more. It's being in a long distance relationship is expensive. It's not cheap to fly across the country or get gas money to go from one place to another. And you have to factor that into consideration. Number three, you have to be 110% or nothing. If you're not committed, don't do that. Just don't. Number four, keep it real by sending each other surprises, like a bouquet of flowers so big that you have to put them in two vases. Hmm. Number five, plan. You should always have a plan of like the next time that you're going to see each other because you need, you need the countdown. You need something to look forward to. Number six, in your time together, act like a normal couple. Don't overdo the PDA. Don't hole up in the bedroom for five days. You need to be social. Entertain your friends. Go out in public. If you have a chance at actually lasting out your long-distance relationship until whatever happens, you have to get the gist of what it's like to be a normal, everyday couple, which is not a luxury that you have in a long-distance relationship. Oh, number seven, you get me every time. It's a sad face with a tear because... It's very hard when you're in a long distance relationship and like one of you is sad or you're fighting because you do not get that consolation and that comfort, that making up feeling where you can just kiss them and look in their eyes and know that everything is better. When you fight, there's a lot more communication that needs to happen, which can be hard sometimes. You just hit a brick wall because there's so much distance between you. So you really need to be committed to sticking out those tough times and being honest with each other and being able to talk things out. It's not easy. It is not. That is the hardest part for me. Number eight, 2468 technology is pretty great. Skype, iChat, whatever you've got, it's just to see somebody's face is better than hearing their voice, better than the text. Number nine, do your thing, do what you got to do. You need to be happy apart to be happy together and you need to foster your own life and your friends wherever you may be and not just get sucked in to putting all of your energy into your long distance relationship. Last but not least, put away your pride. Get sexual. Get textual. Send some sexy pictures like this. Or this. I think we can all agree that that wink thing I just did was a little creepy, so without further ado, Let's go on to the rapid-fire sexual Q&A. Tanya, what is a healthy sex life? How many times? Honestly, the average American has 13 sexual partners throughout their lifetime. I think that's kind of low-balling it. They probably didn't survey the frat guys, but I honestly don't think it matters. You know, as long as you're safe and smart about it, go to town. Ooh, ah, I know that I said sexual, but somebody asked me such a good question on Form Spring. They asked me if, since gay marriage was legalized in New York, if I lived in a state where gay marriage is legal, would I do it or would I wait out for a federal law? 
And I think, honestly, the answer is that I'm a selfish little bitch, and if my state legalized gay marriage, I would get married in it. It would suck. Oh, God, I'm so torn on this one. Fuck. How long should I wait to have sex? I don't know. Till it happens, probably. What do you think about shaving the downstairs area? I think it's great. I actually had never done it until recently in my life. Then I'm 26, and I don't think I'd go back. I don't. What do I think about porn? Um, I think porn is great. I think that some porn is really horrible, but some is good, and whatever floats your boat or turns you on, even if it's not like your sexual orientation or whatever, I hear this a lot, um, doesn't mean anything. It's just fucking is hot, so if that's what you want to get behind, then go for it. Don't feel guilty about it. My girlfriend wants to have sex at least five times a day. I know I am good, but shit is almost like a second job. How do I say no or not right now to my half-naked girlfriend? You don't. I am a lesbian and in love with my girlfriend, but lately I have been having sex dreams about men. What the fuck does that mean? I don't know. I had a dream last night that I turned into a fucking marshmallow. What does that mean? Nothing. So normally this is a time that I would call Clyde, but she's definitely asleep by now. We have a bit of a time difference, so instead I will bid you adieu and say goodnight, and I hope that you took something from this. I don't know what, but I hope that you did. Goodnight.